I first heard the news from my cousin. He texted me to let me know. And he was like, yeah, your dad passed away. I went to Coach Barnett. He just held me in his hand, hit me in his arms, and that's when all of like the rest of the rest of the word got out, and my teammates just pretty much just all surrounded me. We all immediately went to him. He was struggling, asked him if he what he wanted to do. He was scheduled to start that day, and he wanted really to be around his team. That was his family. I said, yeah. And I know he, he, he would want to watch that game anyway. I told him I was going to be able to start that game. And so we walk, and we're going down like our Spartan walk, our normal Spartan walk that we do. And um, I'm surrounded by Chris Fry and, and Mufi Hunt, and they're just holding me. When we get to the field, we all traditionally lock arms and walk on. But me and Coach D stayed behind. And he just, he just wanted me to know that, like, my brothers, they're here for me. You know, yeah. And they were there for me, you know, and Fire it up. First trip. Let's go. Ready to get it going. Here we go. Yeah, it's going to be a fun weekend. <laughs> Great way to start off the year, baby. <laughs> you got to get to the phone. If it'll ring. If it's going to go on the loudspeaker. <laughs> this is a veteran move to, you know, grab a travel pillow, lay down, have a nice 45 minute nap. Nice. Ooh, we got Oreos. <laughs> I was like a banana. Oh, no one tells Ooh, what do we got? We got some sun chips? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marquette. Park local time is 227. Thank you for allowing us to assist you with your travel needs. We wish you the best of luck this season. Good skate, you know, I think the boys are ready to go. We'll be jumping tomorrow. I'm pumped. Just a good skate in Northern. Hungry, about to get some food now. I mean, I can't wait to eat. Steak, baby. You gotta get that hitter, get that steak in us, you know. Get it. We had, uh, what, fried asparagus, temp tempura? Yeah, and some bruschetta. Really good. I, mean, I tried bruschetta for the first time. Never had that before. Really We're trying to figure out what the tuxedo yeah. cake is. Though. We're not yeah. sure. We're more focused on asparagus. Who let you get that seat? I'm the Don. Right I'm the Don. New York strip, New York mashed strip. potatoes, some broccoli. And we got a carrot, in the shape of a carrot, shaved as a carrot. Pretty remarkable stuff, actually. I say dive in. Uh, make sure you make sure you give back your plate and it's empty. There we go. Okay. We'll play it together. Cheers. Cheers. My parents were divorced, but my dad. Um, he was always around. He was, we grew up with him. He raised us. He, he did everything he can. It's, and that means a lot, especially like the environment. You know, like most people don't have a dad. Most people don't get to grow up with having a father in their life. You know, he was a big part of my life. He, he was the main reason why I, why I love school so much and stuff like that. And my mom, she's, she's a very, very, very strong woman. 
I grew up in Dallas, Texas. The street was uh, 1310 Hendrix. In Dallas, Texas, we had a, a nice little view of the city where I grew up. Pretty much our neighborhood was all close. Everybody knew everybody on every block. So we all just kind of bonded from then and everybody was went to the same elementary school, same middle school, same high school. But it was definitely tough where we, where we came from. We was always moving around, bouncing around house to house. It was a lot of negativity, basically. And so, it's just, just what it was, violence, drugs. The focus level for him to avoid the temptations of partying and, 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 and doing various things were, was, was elite. And with the temptations, right, that exist for most teenagers, but specifically teenagers uh, from the faux block where them guys are from out there in Mesquite. It's rare to have seen kids that have gone through the adversity that he had gone through. Sports was the main thing to keep us distracted. That in, in school, I was the one, out of me, out of, out of all my brothers, I, I say I was the one whose main, main focus was school. As soon as I get from school, go straight home do my homework and I'd be free for the rest of the day. I just hanged out with my friends. And me and my friends, we just, well, all we did was <laughs> more sports stuff anyway. So just kept doing that repetitively and not, not knowing like it was gonna keep me out of trouble. Just, just doing it because I felt like doing it and felt like it was fun for me. Hey, Road Warriors, then I put a full 60 together. Go green on three. One, two, three, go green! A real easy game plan. Early, okay, up, out, in, and four check, all right? Keep doing that over and over. You guys got her? Starters, let's go, uh, Kodo. You guys get that one. Yes, sir! Yes. Yes. Ross, Ross and Denny on the back. Yes, yes sir! Bill yes. Bond's been sticking today. Come on! Bill Bond's been Let's go! All right, Come on, so step. Start this right, boys. Go green! Go green! Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Barry Event Center in Marquette, Michigan. Same two teams that opened the season last year at Mon Ice Arena with a split. Michigan State winning on Friday, Northern coming back on Saturday. So they drop the puck, and we are underway. The 2019-2020 season has begun, and the Spartans will go on the power play first to Jagger, now cross oh, ice, shot, nice. goal for Michigan State. Christian Krieger lights the lamp from the top of the right circle. Spartans with a power play tally. Well, good puck movement by Michigan State on that power play. And Cole Krieger wasted no time with the quick cranker. Spartans scored their goal on the power play early in the first period, trying to keep that from happening here late in the first period for Northern Michigan. Newhouse over to the left side with a shot goal for Northern Michigan. Hank Sorensen ties it up. Each team with a power play tally. Oh, come on. Centering yes. pass, shot, goal for Michigan State. Sasana he was standing in the left circle all by himself, took the pass and buried it. Well, a big goal for Michigan State at the end on that power play. He's got to regain the lead. Brody Stevens attacking, yes. loose shot, goal! Off of the rebound, Brody Stevens took the shot, it bounced back out, and the goal goes in off the stick of Tommy Apat. And Michigan State will take a two goal lead, three to one, into the second intermission. I said, we won the first, we won the second, let's finish this, all right? Finish it hard. Come out with pace, put it in, four check, wear them down. Energy's ours, all right? Let's go. <laughs> the rebound on the rush. Northern pulls right back within one again. Yeah, kind of an innocent looking shot from the right side on that rush, Scott, and it just got away from John Lethem. So Northern with a big answer of their own to pull within one again, four to three now. The Spartans are gonna have to withstand some pressure here for the next few minutes. Now here comes Northern back in. Down the slot, shot, pad save. Swept away by Miller. Over to Craighead with a one-timer. Great block by Boutris Gafari. Six on five. 
advantage with a goalie pull. Brody Stevens picks up, down to the left circle, hey! pops it into the empty net. Goal for Michigan State. And the horn will sound, and that will do it. The final score, Michigan State 5, Northern Michigan 3. He wasn't the biggest kid, he wasn't necessarily the fastest kid, but he was a kid that worked the hardest. It's kind of one of those things where you, know, you start out as a freshman and a sophomore, he might not even have been the best best player on the team at the time. As he kind of grew up to being a junior, he kind of, you know, really worked his way into being a starter for us. And, and then, you know, of course, as a senior, he came in and all that hard work paid off. And uh, you get him out on the field, he was the fastest kid on the field. I mean, he, everybody else sometimes felt like they were running in slow motion. Josh Butler was a ball playing guy. And when the lights came on, he was a good practice player. He was good Monday through Thursday. But on Friday, man, he turned up and became a whole nother guy and made just a bunch of plays for us. Was just an encouragement to his teammates. You know, he got other guys around him to play better. Coach Ward, he, he really helped my game go up another level. And that's when like, like the crowds became bigger you know, a lot of the people started noticing who I was. All the kids would just flock to my house. They didn't have anywhere to go. That's where they stayed. When they didn't want to go home, that's where they stayed. I just got used to coming in the house and just stepping over. He would come and say, can I come? Or, you know, can I stay the night? Or whatever the case might be. But it was times where you just knew. You just knew, you know, when they were all at the house or he was sitting at the house, you just didn't, you knew it was something that this is where he needed to be. It was kind of an all hands on dick. It wasn't even a planned thing. It wasn't something that all the adults sat down and said, hey, you do this, I do this, you do this. It's just people kind of stepped in, you know, and, and you know, his friends, moms helped out a lot. Josh would get to school extremely early. School started, I think, 8.45, and he would be in the coach's office, 7.15, 7.20, just watching film, you know, because that's that's what he did. That's, he'd get there early because he had to, and he'd just sit there and watch film. You kind of just understood that's, that's his character. He's, he's just gonna handle it and move forward and do what he can do and control what he can control. Man, those guys that were that grew up together uh, on the fold, like they used to call it, were close-knit guys away from the field. Uh, their parents raised them all together, and I think that that community that kind of adopted the, you know, the village mentality in terms of when you see my kid out of line, get him corrected, and uh, when I see your kid out of line, I'll get him corrected. It takes a community, because I would hope that if if it was my personal kids, that somebody would reach out and do the same thing. It's just what it is, and they all just stay close to one another, take care of one another. Spending more time with them, more than anything, was 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 a blessing. You know, they they became a huge impact on my life. It was like a lot of rough stuff happening. And I just needed somewhere to stay, and they took me in with open arms. That right there, you know, just I could have been homeless. I could have anything could have happened. Greyhound bus ride took 49 straight hours. It was, it was an experience, I tell you that. Like, I, st I stopped in a bunch of places. This is something that wouldn't stop me, you know. It was the most affordable thing that, that I could, you know, handle or that we could, like, come up with. I was told, I want to go visit Tennessee. Okay, then you're going to come on back. Then I remember my kid's dad getting a phone call. He's like, did you know they putting Josh on the bus? to go to Michigan. I said, no, Josh can't get on no bus to go to Michigan State. What's wrong with y'all? Who bought that ticket? He said, well, I bought it. I said, why would y'all send that baby all the way to Michigan? What is he going to do once he get off the bus? I recall conversations with Josh and him saying, like, man, I, I kind of want to get out of Texas. Like, 
I want to experience something else. His demeanor, his work ethic, his character and mentality, I had no doubt that he would he would make it wherever he decided to go. That's the kind of kid he is. If it's there and it's laid out for him, um, a plan, and he buys into it, he'll go to any distance to do it. He, it's, it's, I don't think there's an extreme for him. Wasi takes the snap, in trouble in the backfield, and drilled and dropped back at the 16. Spartans all over him, Josh Butler from the corner. Nobody else really like persuading me to go to like a certain school. They made me make my own decisions, which I've been doing my whole life anyway. I just didn't let nobody know until, you know, close to the end. I was like, yeah, I was gonna go to Michigan State anyway. Like, whether you like it or not, whether it's like super far away from Texas or not, you know, I, I can fly back. For one, I wanted to get out of Texas, you know, just to experience life more, you know, get to know places. And I'm glad I came to Michigan State anyway, because well, I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. Everybody who who actually says like it's a it's a family here, they're they're for real. It's really a family here and they take care of you. And no matter what you're going through, you can always have somebody to talk to at least. I had them for to help me out through pretty much anything, you know, especially dealing with the deaths of my family and my family, you know, and um it was a great decision that I made, you know. You know it, it, <laughs> Probably one of the best decisions of my life. My mom first told me she um, had stage four cancer for the second time. When that happened, um, you know, I was able to actually finish finish classes and stuff early, and I packed up all my stuff, and they told me it was a possibility of it being terminal. You know, it was tough to, like, just see it, you know, because nobody wants to see, see your mom, like, struggling and stuff like that. When she passed, we was able to give her a nice funeral service. Everybody wore pink and white for breast cancer. We was able to, like, get a proper burial and stuff for her, which was, which was great. But also, with my time down there, it was a lot of business that I had to take care of. Actually, my dad's ashes. I took that and I drove two hours um, to his mom's grave because he he never got the chance to like actually visit his mom when he lost his mom. He just pretty much went to, it went to into depression. Knowing that now and knowing like what your parents was going through and stuff like that and understanding it. Um, I got a like, better understanding of like, life and what really goes on in life and, sh and it shows who, who is there for you and stuff like that. And, but I drove down two hours to my grandma's grave and, and I buried the urn there with my grandma. And this, like I said, this is what I got from it. And like I said, I keep it with me at all times. Sometimes you just need to be there and wrap your arms around him and just hold him because that's that's what he needs you know i think growing up that's probably a lot that he missed out on it's been hard for him it's been hard to just sit here and watch him come and go you know you know that it's on his mind and no matter how much you hug him until it passes until it gets a little older it's it's gonna be there we sat here and he bawled and i bawled with him but it's gonna be okay. For him to continue to do things the way he's doing them and represent Michigan State and represent his, his last name and his community where he went to high school, there's something great at the end of this journey for Josh Butler. You can just feel it. There's not a day that don't go past where I don't think about my mom or think about my dad. I know they'll be proud of me regardless. I just know that my parents are looking, looking, looking down from up above and, and just smiling. Sit, sit, good, shake, good. Josh is a winner and he's always been a winner and he's continuing to win right now. What he did, not only will it inspire a 
generation of young folks that look up to him like his little brothers. Kids growing up over there in, in, in the West Mesquite attendance zone that know Josh Butler, he'll, he'll inspire those folks to go out and be different and pursue college. And then for his own family, he just rewrote the whole story this point forward on the Butler boys. Josh is just another example of when you make a decision, um, no matter your circumstance, anything that you're willing to, to, to fully put everything you have into is achievable. Like they say, he got it out the mud. I mean, through and through, I know that's a popular thing for people to say. Josh Butler is a perfect example of a kid that made a decision and no matter the circumstance, he got to where he wanted to be. You know, and I don't think that journey's over for him. Keep being Josh Butler. Be you, and I think he's, that's something that he's embraced, you know. I think that's where the Josh Butler TV thing comes from. Academic excellence. Academic excellence, Roxy. That's what we did. That's what we did. <laughs> I really believe that because of everything that he's been through, he sees himself being in that role model to help the next person. And that's where I see him at the, at the most. You know, whether it's doing one of his crazy videos. You could be having a bad day and because he then came out and did something crazy, you just be laughing all over the place. And I think he brings that out of the next person. I actually got a hit on a running back today. From the day I stepped on campus to going through adversity, being able to live prosperous and thank God for being able to at least graduate or to get two degrees at that. I'm glad that I've went through everything that I went through and I'm glad that I did it here.